Right now we've got the guys from Cathedral here on the Headbangers Ball. We have Gaz and Lee. Welcome to the ball. I do. Now you guys have been on tour for a while with uh, Merciful Fate. That's right. Yep. yep. And how's that show been going? Uh, it's been going pretty cool. Um, you know, it's ups and downs as with every tour. Uh-huh. Um, you know, you lose track of being on tour after a while anyway, you know, living out of me out of Taco Bells, like staying in Motel 6, and being stuck in a van for 10 hours with the same people, it's kind of... Now, what, now how long has Cathedral been together? Three years, mm -hmm. about two and a half to three years. So now, have you been to America before? Yeah. This is like about our third time. Uh -huh. Well, this is our second full Because where are you from? Where, where, from where did the band originated in England? Yeah. Now, it seems like to me, listening to the <coughs> Cathedral, and we played the video a couple times on Headbangers Ball, that you guys have a real heavy sound, but also it's heavy with a lot of the influences from some of the older stuff like the Sabbath or stuff like that. Well, that's what it's about to us anyway, you know? Well, I mean, Sabbath is without a doubt our most collective. So good, I heard that in the song, so then it was, it was right. It, oh yeah, I mean, there's nothing being, as far as we're concerned, there's like nothing wrong being compared to like, say as, as we're concerned, like the greatest band that ever walked the earth, you know? I Sabbath, mean, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of cool rap. bands been around in, in, in their day, you know, but to us, Sabbath is the ultimate band that ever existed. Ever, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we don't try and copy their style or anything, they're just a big influence. No, that's what I said. When I, when I heard the CD, what it sounded like to me, it sounded like that you guys were influenced, but it has a real heavy attitude, too. It's well, yeah, got like, a mean, lot of the not, heavy stuff that we're listening to today. We're just like trying to be, I mean, you know, you, you get these bands who claim to be like heavy metal for the 90s, but I mean, as far as we're concerned, like, oh, you know, we, we are heavy metal, we're just like straight down the line heavy metal, but we're just trying to be real heavy, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. people say we're death metal, I mean, I don't hear any death metal in this at all, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's irrelevant. To it's more the vibe, you know, from the early 70s that we're trying to capture. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not as though we're trying to relive the 70s or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the, the vibe of, like, 100% freedom in, in music creativity, you know, that's what we want to try and recapture that vibe, not, mm -hmm. not try and relive that era or something. Great. Well, the record is called, Eth how do you pronounce the word? Ethereal Mirror. Ethereal Mirror. How is that? And we're going to be talking to the guys from Cathedral, and we're also going to play their video for Midnight Mountain when the Headbangers Ball continues. The band Cathedral. Now on the record, Ethereal, how's that? The Ethereal Mirror, which looks something like this, which is at your stores right now. Now guys, you play guitar and bass yeah, on, right. on the record. Yeah. Was uh, that? Well, that's simply because we couldn't have, we never found a bass player in time to do the record. And even if we did have, you know, we, it was simply a case of, I knew all the stuff anyway, so I thought I'd just play it instead of learning somebody. But I mean, <laughs> Still up to this day, we, I mean, we've only got like a temporary bass player at the moment on tour with us, who we do want to join. But I mean, he's going through a uh, pretty hard time at home and stuff like that, so it might not work out, but we do want him to be stick around. His name's Scott. Mm -hmm. and, oh, he's uh, turned into the music. He's, he's, he's totally into it, but you know, he's got a lot of problems at home and it might cause him not to uh, continue with us. But uh, we want him to, uh, we still want him to be in the band and stuff like that. The only reason, like, say, I played bass was because we never had a bass player, and it was and you easy. already knew all the stuff. Uh, yeah, anyway. it was easy for me. Well, he to do wrote it. most of the material as well, so yeah. yeah. It was just easier me playing it rather than sit down for like a, you know, a month with somebody and saying, oh, you know, because even though we never, never found anybody any, in time anyway. You know? mm -hmm. Just half of the songs came together about a week before we yeah. went to the studio as well. What so. did you have? Did you have like a set deadline? Say, okay, you guys have got to put out a record by this time, and say, okay, let's start writing now. Well, no, we or got these songs over. We had a set time to go in the studio. We were in the studio by January, and uh, you know, we had like we had about thirteen songs around December, but we like threw like seven of them, seven or eight away, and we had like a, this was like I say about a month before we went in the studio, and then uh, we had like we, had, like, we, weeks realized, we realized like. Yeah. Um, about three weeks prior to going to the studio that the songs just weren't us, you know, like, at least half of the songs that we had ready. And um, it was a case of just like freaking out and just putting our heads to the wall and just like within the space of 10 days coming up with another six songs, you know. And like half of the lyrics and stuff were actually written in the studio and I was seeing them for the first time and stuff. I mean, that's the way we always work. That's the way we've always worked until now. It wasn't as, it, I mean, before it's not as been as manic as this time. No, that was like, that was totally intense what we were doing, just doing that, you know, writing. Record, we're rehearsing, recording, mixing, and like whatever, laying down the vocals, and then we'd be recording of a song. Boss would be opening his room, like writing the words and stuff like that. I mean, it adds, a, it adds a total spontaneous vibe to it, which makes it more. Which is kind of nice sometimes. It is, yeah. Okay, we're going to play a video right now, Midnight Mountain. Anything, it's a debut. Anything you want to tell us real quick about okay, the video? Okay, well, don't take it seriously. It's tongue in cheek, and that's all. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I mean, the you. song itself, Midnight Mountain, is not really a typical cathedral song mm -hmm. in the same sense as the video is not a typical cathedral video. I don't know if there is a typical cathedral video, but I mean, it's just um, just us living out our disco fantasy, really, I guess. Okay, it's, just, well. yeah, it's not a case of like, uh, all of a sudden we've just seen like, I know this 70s thing is like getting big and everybody's wearing all these flares and things like that, but we haven't just like, 
all of a sudden turn around and say, oh, well, we'll, we'll just do it, but let's, we'll just go over the top with it. We're just doing this tongue-in-cheek anyway, so I mean, just don't take it serious. So take it for what it's worth. Here's the debut. This is Cathedral. And speaking of Halloween, you guys have got a pretty wild show lined up for Halloween. Yep, the tour ends at the Academy on the 31st, so should be pretty cool. I thought you guys were playing the Limelight Halloween. Yeah, there's a... We're we'll playing afterwards as well. we'll so you guys got two shows Halloween night. Night, yeah, yeah. The Academy's like the full show now, I think, at the Limelight. Say 1.30 or something apparently, there's an MTV party. Uh huh. And we're just gonna do a few songs, I guess, and it's free admission. If, I think if people go to the Academy show and have the ticket stuff, they can get into the, the limelight show free. So. Now, Halloween night at the Academy, you're playing with Merciful Fate, right? right? right yeah. Which should probably bring all the sickos out for Halloween that night should be to fun. see Merciful Fate. Fate on Halloween. How has the tour been going so far with them? I mean, you've been, you've been having a good time with that show? Yeah. Fair response from the crowd, I suppose. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, you know. Um, I mean, I think, like, Merciful Fate's audience is probably, like... Merciful older, Fate's audience. Older generation, kind of. Right. Yeah, well, rock fans, what I can't understand about that, though, the older generation, is the fact that there's a lot of young kids there mm -hmm. who probably never even heard them well, the first yeah, time true. around, like, and, uh, you know, they go down, the shouting Satan's fall, evil, and stuff like that, and it's like they probably never even heard of Merciful Fate the first time around, which is really weird. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's a good thing in itself, like, you know. And, uh, you know, I suppose the younger they are, the more, like, they can get into us, I suppose, you know, because they're uh, kind of young. I mean, that. people have been like, I mean, there's probably about, say, five or six percent of the audience who are really familiar with us every night. And um, the rest of the audience is kind of standing there. They're not walking away. They're, yeah. they're curious, you know, and it's kind of... Yeah, well, it's, it's, it seems like it's always tough to be in an opening band position because people sometimes aren't as open to listen to the first band. They want to see the headliner and they don't care what comes up, yeah, you know? Yeah, totally. I, I mean, yeah, totally. no matter what the response is, we always like put on a, the, the best show we possibly right. can because we love the music and we just get totally into it. You know, if there's like people throw that probably incites us to get into it more, you know? Now, what about after Halloween? What are your tour plans? Anything yet? Well, we'll take a week off, I think, a week and a half or something, and then uh, hopefully we're supposed to be coming back on the 11th of November with like uh, Rob Alpha's new band Fight. That'd be a good um, tour, that'll be a fun show. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah we're, only doing, we're not doing a full tour, we're doing like three weeks and I think it's like a six week tour and we're doing the first three weeks. It's not definitely confirmed but it looks like no, it. Yeah, so it cross your fingers ladies and gentlemen and if you hear about Fight, see what Cathedral's playing with them. Once again the record is called... Ethereal Mirror. Ethereal Mirror. It's out in your stores. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. It's been Cheers, great. Ricky. Right, and a Halloween look for them in New York and after that hopefully coming to a theater or drive-in near you. And right now we're gonna play a video from Sepultura. Now the new Sepultura, it sounds definitely like it's been produced a lot better. It's got a much bigger sound, but it hasn't left uh, the whole feel of what Sepultura is all about. This new record, it, uh, video rather, was filmed in Israel. So right now let's take a look at Sepultura with Territory. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.